Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Debbie and I started selling on eBay back in 2004. So I have sold a lot of items and a lot of breakable items. And today I am creating this video to show you how I package my breakable items to ensure that they get to the buyer safely. I got thrown into learning how to ship breakables. It was probably a year or two into my reselling and a really sad story happened, but it ended up being a, a good thing that I was able to help someone and it helped me. There was a very high profile couple in the community where I lived and they were going through a separation and the husband tried to kill the wife. He shot her and um, then he shot himself and committed suicide. Well, it ended up that she made it. She lived and she ended up having a lot of really expensive, nice items, but not a lot of money in the bank to live. So. She heard from a friend of a friend of my mom's about me and that I sold on eBay. So she asked if I would sell items for her. So I said yes, and it ended up being just an amazing opportunity. She was a great person, and I learned that there is a whole nother level of lifestyle out there. I saw the most amazing things. I saw these huge Versace pillows for like $500 clothing that had price tags on them that were in the thousands, like just incredible stuff that I had never been exposed to. Well, one of the loads of things that she brought over was Waterford Crystal and not just a little bit, like so much Waterford Crystal. And at this time, my kids were little. So I had three little ones with Waterford Crystal everywhere. Jason was probably about one, just pulling up and starting to walk. Sydney was probably two or three and Morgan five or six. And at that time, I had a little teeny tiny house and not a lot of space and the kitchen, dining room and living room were all one room and that was really the only place I had to put anything. So every surface was covered in waterford crystal. The, the table, the counters, there was a little shelf. It was just everywhere with three little ones and um, that nothing broke. Well, I had to learn really quickly how to package breakable items so that I did not break any of those things. And at the same time, Morgan was in school and they were doing an egg drop contest where you took a raw egg and you had to package it in a way that you thought it would survive when the principal went to the roof of the school and would drop the box. I learned from that <laughs> that the best way to package the egg was to make sure that it didn't move around in the package and double box it. So that's what I did with all of the crystal and all of the other breakables and it worked beautifully, nothing broke. And so I continued using that method from then on. And back then there was not YouTube. I had no resources to learn how to ship. So I was so lucky that Morgan had that that project at her school at the same time. <laughs> so now I feel so confident about shipping and I love being able to pick up breakables that I might have otherwise passed by if I hadn't learned that. So today I am going to ship a few breakable items with you. I'm going to start out with the easiest, just a little mug and then go to something that's a little more difficult when you have two breakable items in one package and then the last item a set of four glasses how to package those and it's kind of dark usually I ship upstairs so it's kind of dark up there so I'm gonna do it right here on my kitchen counter okay when you pick up an item that is breakable you first want to consider how much money am I going to make on this item because if it is only a few dollars, it might not be worth the time that it takes to package it. It does take more time, more effort. So if you're only going to make $5, you might not want to pick up that item.
So definitely consider how much time it's going to take you to package the item. When you have a breakable item, I recommend that you always make sure that you have the materials to package it and send it out when you list the item because it is awful when you sell an item and you do not have what it takes to package it and send it off. That creates a lot of stress and it can end up costing a lot of time and money. And when you're packaging something that you might have to put a lot of layers in and multiple boxes, it can end up weighing a lot more than you had planned and the dimensions can be larger, which can throw you into a different rate. So the best practice is go ahead and package it when you get it, weigh it, measure it, and that way you never come up short on how much you charge on shipping and you always have the supplies that you need. And it is so nice if you have something prepackaged, it sells and oh, it's already ready. All I have to do is print the postage. So that's a really good practice to have. Okay, I'm going to start out with a mug. Those are pretty easy. And I think really a huge key is double boxing. So we will start out with a smaller box. And I normally don't buy any shipping supplies. My mom saves so much for me. Thank you, mom. <laughs> and um, so it's a wide variety of things air jackets, different kinds of foam, and any kind of filler. So it's really nice if you can tell people that you need um, different types of filler material and have them save it for you because number one, a lot of times people feel kind of guilty about throwing that stuff away so they have someone to give it to and it will save you a lot of money. I bought this big thing of bubble roll, but I probably, purchase that maybe once a year because my mom saves so much of it for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to wrap it with one layer of bubble wrap and I always stuff it full of something because I think that creates more stability for it if it is not empty. So I just poke that inside and I wrap it all around and if there's any type of edge or anything poking out, I will put a little more on that area. I just kind of folded it over and give it a little bit of extra protection. And then I always fill all around and oh, I can fill the edges there. So I'm going to put some more there and let me use one of these. And then I tape it in place because I don't want it to move around. I want those areas that I felt the edges and the handle to stay protected so that it won't move. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a small box and you wanna make sure that you put filler in there all around so that it does not move at all because movement means breakage. <laughs> and if you, if you think about it, if you have some fill in there, but it's not solid where it can't move and you have an item inside, what is going to happen if there is some space the weight of the object is going to make it fall towards that space and then you will have the item touching the side of the box and that's not good, you don't want that. You want it in the middle of the fill. So I will take some packing peanuts that I got from my mom and put them in the bottom. Then I will put my mug on top and then I will make sure that there are peanuts all around and on top and there is no extra space. So that is going to be a snug fit all around when I close it. Perfect. Now I'm going to take Another box, this is, I use these boxes all the time. If you have an eBay store, you get 
a shipping credit every quarter. And so I buy these boxes all the time. This little box, this eight by six by four is great for small items. And then I often put it in the eight by eight by eight box after that. So those are two boxes that I love. <laughs> so now I'm going to put some kind of fill in the bottom and it doesn't have to be packing peanuts. Sometimes I will put all kinds of different fill. The point is just to make sure that it does not move around. Okay, then I'm going to add some peanuts. is not when they're in the box, but when I'm carrying them or moving them, that's, they're a lot more vulnerable then. And then say, what is more realistic? Probably that boxes, heavy boxes, that this is a full inventory. It has lots of clothes in it, so it's heavy. So it's probably going to have boxes set on top of it and maybe banged around a little bit. That could be more realistic on the sides. So we put that through a little bit of trauma. Oh, I'll drop it again. And again. And, okay, you see the box got banged up. And probably it will not go through that much ever when being shipped, but you wanna be prepared so that just in case it is, that your item is safe. And then we will open it back up. And let's see. That'd be really bad if this broke. <laughs> but I am confident that it won't because I have not had one item break, knock on wood, that I use this method. And I have shipped well over a thousand breakables. If, you know, I just ship five a month over almost 17 years. And then there have been definite spurts of times where I've shipped a lot more than that. It's well over a thousand. And I can count on one hand how many times things actually broke. And they were due to my own fault because I wanted to save $3 and didn't double box. So that was a way of teaching myself a life lesson. So then... We open it up, it does not even look like anything's moved. And I really, let's see. Okay, bubble wrap is all in place. And yay, look, it's still perfect. So it worked. So mugs don't take that much time to package, so I will pick them up if I'm only going to make a $10 profit because, you know, I've got a routine on them and they just take a few minutes for me to do. Now, something that has a couple items in it is going to take a little more work. I just picked these up, they're so pretty. They're hand painted from Italy. How do you say this? One. Musa, something like that, I don't know. But I just got these at Goodwill, they'll be in a haul soon. 
Beautiful. And what I do on things that have multiple items in one box, I try to, if possible, put them in two different boxes inside a large box because I don't want them banging each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to package them each separately and then put them in one box together. And they say that the integrity of a box gets worn down after usage. And so if it is something that is super expensive, valuable, you want to make sure that it does not break, I would recommend using a brand new box. Now with clothing, with everything else, I use recycle boxes all that I can. But if it's an item that you want to take every precaution possible, it's best to use a brand new box so that it hasn't broken down at all. And also pay attention to the quality of the box. Some boxes are a lot more thin than others. So be sure you get a good sturdy box. And these that I get for the free shipping supplies on eBay, they're really nice and sturdy. Okay. So first, I'm going to package the plate and I will create one layer with bubble wrap first. one of the labels because it had multiple labels on it and I sold something it was like a vest or something so she calls me and she's like why did you send me a vest in the mail and I was like oh no and so luckily she lived really close to me and I was able to get it and send it to the right person so be sure sometimes there are multiple labels on packages be certain that you get all labels off before shipping something So that's one. And then I'm going to use my handy little box. Again, that's eight by six by four. And first I'm going to do the exact same procedure. I'm going to just take some bubble wrap. A lot of tape and a lot of packing materials, but I have never once had anybody complain. Like, you use way too much packing material. I think people are just very grateful when their items arrive safely. Not that time consuming. 
if you have all the supplies that you need. And it just, it kind of becomes routine. Oops, there's a little bit of space. I had a huge chandelier that I sold once for like $400. It was amazing. And I thought I cannot take a chance on this. This I am going to have professionally packaged and then insure it. So I took it, had it professionally packaged and they charged me like $40 to package it. Then I went and purchased extra insurance on it and it broke. <laughs> and the insurance denied the claim. They would not pay for it. I was so heartbroken over that one that I have never purchased extra insurance since then. And I take all packaging into my own hands. I think I can package just as good. And so that was, that was um, not a good story, but it taught me to just be confident in my own packaging because that wouldn't have happened if I had packaged it myself. Now, I'm going to put it in the large box. And again, the same exact principles. You wanna make sure that you have fill on all of the sides and that there is no wiggle room. So, ah, there's the rest of That was in my first box. And so, I just have a couple air jackets in there too, that will all work. <laughs> and then one package. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is put that one down and then put this in between the two boxes. Ooh, no, I'm not, I don't want it to be that high. So sometimes you have to play around with it a little bit. It's kind of like putting a puzzle together, making everything fit just right. <laughs> And then this, I don't know, my mom saved this for me. And so, let's see if that will work. Get some space. And nope, that puzzle piece did not fit. So, I will get some other things. If I was sending it to a customer, I would probably try to put in <laughs> matching fill if I could. But right now I'm trying to do this a little bit more quickly so that I don't make this video too long for you guys. not touching any of the sides there will be no room for it to move and so those are the critical things
Oh, tapes. I am confident that my pretty little plates that I just got will survive any kind of trauma that they receive in shipping. So I will, again, drop it from the ceiling. Let me scoot this back so you can actually see that I'm, I'm really dropping it. <laughs> Open it back up and see if it survived. Yeah, I banged that up pretty good. <laughs> so, this is fun. I should have thrown it down the stairs. Okay, oh, see how tightly that's packed in? Nothing was going to move with that. And then the first one. Let's see. Okay. Okay, do you think it broke? Do you think it survived? one one little chip prior and I have that on the listing I already listed it, so that did not occur that is that was like that when I bought it <laughs> and the next one okay also no damage so that that method really does work over and over and over again for me so the last thing that I have is a set of glasses let me click I'm gonna clean this up a little bit before I start on them Okay, so you won't believe what I did. I accidentally deleted a chunk of my video that I made, but I think it's a blessing in disguise because I was showing how to package these four glass cups and it took a long time and there was so much noise of the tape. And so what I'm going to do is I have most of the clip well, not most of the clip. I have a portion of the clip that I still want to show you and let you know if they survived. But instead of watching me wrap each one, since it's the exact same and package it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you how I do um, just two of them quickly. And I already have my tape cut so you don't have to listen to all that noise or I don't have to edit it all out. And then, um, and then it will pick up the clip where I was at, where I'm loading them into the big box. So when you have multiple items, again, packaging them, it's very important that they don't touch and bang together. So you want to create barriers. Now, if you have a set such as four glasses, that can end up taking up a lot of space if you put them 
each in individual boxes and so that sometimes is not feasible. So what I do is I feel like I'm kind of creating a box inside of a box by wrapping them in bubble and then I cut out little cardboard pieces and I put them in between and on top and all around so that it's protected again with another layer of the cardboard and I haven't ever had one break like that. So I'm going to show you where I packed two of them and then I did the exact same thing to the other two. So what I do is, again, I make sure that this is not empty so that it's more stable. So a lot of times I will just push the bubble wrap inside and then go around and I'm still filling a lot of glass so I don't feel comfortable when I can fill an edge. So I take a little bit more and I pack it paying special attention to that handle that it's covered. And oh, how nice that I already have tape. So I'm almost glad that I accidentally deleted that because I think this will be better and not quite so long. <laughs> And then I'm going to set it inside and I always put the handle facing inward. That way it's just less risk, I think. These are just all things that I think. I'm sure that there are a lot of people that have videos out there that are professionals at packaging and they probably know a lot more, but I just know I've shipped thousands of items with this method with success. So I think this way works too. <laughs> And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and put one in there and package up my next one. And these are really pretty. They're vintage glasses. I found them at Goodwill and they were still brand new in the box. So what I would normally do, the box I did not feel safe with. Um, so what I would do is still send them the original box, but have them be packaged very carefully. Okay, so put that in. Always pay special attention to anything that sticks out. Then, oh no, I used the big one. I was going to use that to fill the top. Oh well. Again. Okay. Now I'm going to put this in. So it's kind of hard to tell even where the handle is. So essentially, they're inside with the handles like that facing each other. But then I put the cardboard in between. And then I take another piece of cardboard, put it on that side. I put piece of cardboard there. I put a piece of cardboard across here. I put cardboard on this side. <laughs> I put cardboard on this side. Then I will take packing peanuts and I will find every little nook and make sure that I have it completely filled in. So these glasses are not going anywhere. Okay. So that is completely packed. Extra layers of protection and that, I'm confident, will survive being dropped from the ceiling, down the stairs, anything you can think of. Okay, I'm gonna have to edit one tape out. Okay, so then I do the exact same process for these two. And now this will pick up where I left off before I deleted part of it. Okay, my, my memory ran out. I had to delete some stuff. So I think we were at, I got this 
box and it's that same size 15 by 12 by 10 it's actually the same one i'm reusing it <laughs> and so i'm putting some packing in the bottom and then let's see how much space this will have so i want a good layer of protection all around. So this is going to be plenty of space. Hard to see, but I can put it where that there's space on all the sides and on top. So, let's see. See, I just have all kinds of cool little things my mom saved, so this looks like good to put in between. So I will put that in there. And there's these on the side. Then we are out of packing. See that? Oh, I just sold something. So let's see, this takes up a good amount of space. Oh yeah, that's great. Put that in there. The main thing is you just don't want any wiggle room whatsoever at all. So you can use a wide variety of items to pack it in, but you also want to pay attention to weight and some things are a lot heavier or a lot lighter. So I'm just filling in all the space here. Oh, well, there are more packing peanuts. Now, I'm going to stand up here and drop it from above my head to the ground, and then I'm going to also throw it down the stairs. So, let me... Okay. So, it is... I'm actually touching the ceiling with it, and I'm going to throw it. Wow, that was kind of a bang. <laughs> okay. Now... I'm going to throw it around a little bit more. Now I'm going to take you over to the stairs. I'm going to turn out my light to do that. Okay, I'm going to take this to the top of the stairs. Okay, here it goes. Okay, now let's open it and see. Okay, we're back. Fun. I like making these kind of videos. Let me know if you want me to do any more shipping videos. Okay. So let's see. It would be a lot more daring if I threw it on something that I already sold. <laughs> and remove all the layers. Here's the first one. Okay. See how that is. And I'm going to reuse all of these packing materials. Okay. Yay! The first one made it. Aren't those pretty? Those are vintage glasses. Okay. Now for the second one. Yay! That one made it. Oh, 
packaging things up. I'm not often unpackaging them. I'm a much better seller than I am buyer. My husband, though, is a really good buyer. And he'll get something in and he'll show it to me. I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's neat. He's like, you want the box, don't you? I'm like, yes, that's a perfect shipping box. <laughs> and the packing materials. Okay, number three. The last one. Yay! <laughs> they all made it. See? So, that is it. I will stop right there because I think this is going to be pretty long, but. Um, just remember the most important things I think are double boxing or if you have two items, triple boxing. Sometimes if you have the two things in one box, put extra layers of protection between them in the box. Make sure there is plenty of room when you do the final box so that there is um, some type of filler on each of the sides. At least I've heard anywhere from two to four inches <laughs> on each of the sides, bottom and top. And then the last thing, make sure nothing can move. <laughs> and if you do those things, then I am confident that your items will make it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope everybody has a great day and feels really confident about shipping breakables. Bye. <laughs>